That's an army man, Justice. I, uh, I could not be more proud of this, really. This is outstanding. You know, let me first, before I really get into what I want to say tonight, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I want you all to stop and think for one second that you're Americans first, you're citizens, you're voters. I want you to recognize the fact that you have elected officials here. A lot of people, they denigrate politicians, okay? But the politicians that show up at functions like this are here, why? Not because they're looking for votes, but because they're here to show you respect. You know, right now you have Congressman Pat Murphy, okay? Showing you respect. Of course, our District Attorney Seth Williams, showing you respect. Brian Lentz, one of your own. My good friend, Senator Tony Williams. Senator, please stand up. Tony's a local guy, soon to be running for governor. I'm not here endorsing anyone. I'm not allowed to be political. Okay? All right. Admiral and Congressman Joe Sestak's guys are here in the room. And I always say that because it's important to recognize our political leadership. Now, I want to just say a few things first. Any here have little brothers and little sisters? Do any of you listen to them when they give you advice? I don't. My youngest brother, Danny is here tonight and he's an army veteran and he said to me before I came, Seamus, don't, don't tell any airborne jokes because you're going to get your ass kicked. <clears throat> Looking around this crowd, I believe him. So I'm not going to tell any airborne jokes. But I can tell everybody when Danny joined the army, the family was a little disappointed. We really were. And I said to him, you know, Dan, army does mean ain't ready for Marines yet. <clears throat> now, whoa, 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 whoa. Being a smart soldier, Danny responded quickly, I might add, and at attention. Oh yeah? You know what Marine means? Muscles are required, intelligence not essential. <laughs> Enough said. Enough said. Um, you know, Judge Dugan, thank you so much for that introduction. Mr. Bozak, you know, we go down to shore together. We have actually a place down here. And this man, emulates airborne you know he knows we marines we all like to tease one another with the army guys but and i'm not i'm not saying this to blow smoke but he's one of my heroes he's one of the nicest human beings you ever met in your life he is a man's man he's an airborne man he is a great citizen and he's somebody who cares about our nation i'm humbled to be honored next to him really because that's that's the kind of guy you showed a quality guy in a war tonight but let me, let me go back a few years. How many people in this room right now are immigrants? Come on, let me see some hands. Anybody born outside of America? All right, most of you here are American by birth. I, along with these few in this room, are American by choice. I was not born here. My family has no history in the military, unless you want to include the Irish Republican Army, but some people... I was born in Ireland. We came to this country in 1955. My parents in 1968 signed for me to join the United States Marine Corps. I went off to the University of Paris Island. I was privileged to have been able to serve alongside of individuals who served in World War II, Korea, all the way up to and including Iraq and Afghanistan. I spent 17 years in the Marine Corps, 10 years enlisted. I got the rank of Gunnery Sergeant E7 and Second Lieutenant the same month went up to Marine Corps captain, and then from there I went on to join the Air Force Reserves as a commanding officer of the 913 Security Forces. I was activated during 9-11, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I had the privilege of serving 40 years in our nation's military. Why? Because quite frankly, my family brought us here to become Americans, not Irish Americans. We were here in this country to serve this flag and our nation. We came here because my mother, who went to eighth grade, my father, who went to 10th grade, knew that this was the greatest country in the world. I want you to think about this nation of ours. You're looking at an, immig an immigrant right now who has gone from police officer, walking a beat, to Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. I'm the first cop in the nation to ever do that. You're looking at a guy right now who went from Marine Corps private, and I retired one away from general. 
a full colonel in this country of ours. That says it all, ladies and gentlemen, that if you're willing to serve our nation, you can be anything. I don't care what your race, color, creed, gender, this is the greatest country in the world to allow guys like me to accomplish what I've been able to accomplish. In 2008, when I was told I had to retire from the military, I refused to just walk away. I refused to just stop doing for our military. And I said, what am I going to do to help out our veterans? Well, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I discovered as a Philadelphia police officer was people with mental illness. And one third of our homeless were veterans. One third of the people that I found lying on gutters in downtown in our subway platforms as a cop were not only suffering of mental illness, but they were veterans. They suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. This was a malady unlike anything I've ever seen. We all talk about and we honor those soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who die in combat. We see people like our Chief Justice Ron Castile who lost a leg in Vietnam. We see our comrades coming back with no arms, no legs. But what we don't see, ladies and gentlemen, is that hidden wound, that secret wound, that mental illness they call post-traumatic stress disorder. What people don't understand is so many of our veterans that come back, they end up in our street corners in North Philadelphia, self-medicating themselves on heroin, cocaine, and other drugs. So many of them are over-medicating on alcohol. They're coming home and ending up in domestic violence cases. They're being arrested and they're being brought into our courts. Why? Because they're suffering an illness that is actually a combat wound. A combat wound that's not recognized. And I, when I finally got to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, said I am going to pursue my service to our great country, my service to my men and my women that are serving in our military. And that's why I decided to create veterans court programs throughout Pennsylvania, not just in Philadelphia, but across our great state. Recently, I went to Washington, D.C., where I met with the Veterans Administration and the VA under President Barack Obama has committed to us Veterans Administration hospitals throughout Pennsylvania, Veterans Administration court personnel. We have now created programs, ladies and gentlemen, where we have the VA in our courtrooms. We now identify veterans. Matter of fact, one of our court coordinators for Veterans Court, and I want to recognize him right here. I know you want to hear this, but he's a former Marine. Tom McCourt. Tom, stand up and take a look. Tom is helping to coordinate our veteran mentor program. One of the things that we're doing now is we are assigning veteran judges, like Pat Dugan, Joe, Joe Waters. Joe, stand up, please. We are also asking for veteran mentors. What's a veteran mentor? We're looking for veterans that want to work in our courtrooms as volunteers to help those veterans that suffer from PTSD that get arrested. And ladies and gentlemen, why is this court important? Because I don't think that a veteran should get a criminal record and end up in jail for suffering a result, a, for his pains coming out of our combat world. <laughs> Veterans Court, ladies and gentlemen, is set up so those men and women can be diverted out of our jails. Those men and women can be now taken with the VA and they're given housing, medical treatment, mental health treatment, and last but not least, job training. It's the least we can give back to our men and women who served our country. We also are looking to create what we call reentry programs. We're identifying veterans that are in jail. And we want to get those men and women out of jail and get them treatment from the VA. This is something that's very important to me. Again, as somebody who loves this country, serves this country, and wants to ensure that our veterans get what they deserve. I am not doing it because I have some kind of ego. Personally, I want Pat Dugan to get all the, all of the accolades. Joe Waters, I'm just the guy flying top cover for these judges. This is all because we want to give back to all of you for all you have sacrificed and all you've done. I want you to remember our elected officials. I want you to remember our veterans. And if you want to volunteer for our Veterans Mentor Program, Tom McCourt's here. We're going to be doing public service announcements uh, shortly. Congressman Pat Murphy is taking the lead on this effort, by the way. He and Congressman Bob Brady are out there really kicking some serious, you know what, to get the kind of funding we need 
so that we can have veteran court programs in all 67 counties in Pennsylvania. And with your help, we'll do that. And again, thank you so much for your service to our country. God bless America. God bless our troops.